Ahoy! With Season 8 we get a variety of new starter items that make the whole game a little bit more complicated, especially when it comes to your choice in the beginning of each game. In this video and a few more over the upcoming days I want to break down these starter items, I want to discuss them and rate them based on my time over two weeks on PTS. I've seen all starters in action at this point and used most of those as well as many of the upgrades and we're of course going to talk about the upgrades as well. In this video we're going to begin with the jungle starters, however we will include some other starters that can be made use of in the context of jungle as well. If you support me on Patreon, you have the chance to vote on the order in which I will go through the other roles. I will get through all of them eventually, but this will determine the order in which I make the videos. And now let's talk jungle. First let's have a look at the official jungle items so to speak, being Bamba's Dagger, Eye of the Jungle and Mannequin Scepter as well as their upgrades. These are the items that Hyrus has classified as jungle items and these are the items that we'll probably primarily see. We'll talk about the others at the end. Let's begin with the classic, Bamba's Dagger. Bamba's Dagger is closest to what used to be Bamba's Mask or Assassin's Blessing and generally fulfills a similar role in what it does. However, it does come with some slightly tweaked numbers. It comes with a price tag of 600 gold, it has 50 health and 50 mana, and since the adjustment in the second phase of PTS, it deals 20 true damage with your basic attacks and extra 30% ability damage against jungle camps. It also, when killing a jungle minion, restores 10% of that minion's HP and 25 mana. Now you may notice that this doesn't come with any power. However, because of the 600 gold price tag, you can actually buy tier 2 boots along with that. This gives you a tiny bit of power right at the start, whereas some other items might give you more, but gives you a huge power spike and drastic mobility increase very early into the game. By the first time you back, you can already build full boots very easily and you don't need a lot of gold for that, it's only 700 gold. And on the new map, with a little bit of luck, if you time things right, you should be able to have that much gold after your first rotation, before the buff camps come back up. So this is the perfect time to get a huge power spike on your opponent if he's not running the same path. And that makes Bamba's Dagger as a whole very beneficial because it's the only item that allows this exact start. And honestly, after having tried it and many other variations with Pots or with Hog, this seems like the path that you prefer with most characters since you have a pretty huge health restore at this point, which has been increased from the previous one. And you also get so much extra mobility that while you may not be the fastest clearing one, you rotate so quickly that you kind of end up okay anyways. Bamba's Dagger also has one of the best upgrades for ability-based characters, so I would definitely place this very high. I would say this is an S-tier item that you will see on many, many junglers since their choices are relatively limited and this one stands out for many of them. The next one is Eye of the Jungle. Eye of the Jungle costs 650 gold, so you can't get tier 2 boots right away. And it comes with 10 physical power, 20 magical power, 15 HP 5 as its sustain and 15% attack speed. It also increases your damage versus camps by 30% and when you kill a large minion then you place a ward that lasts for 30 seconds. I thought this item was weird when I first saw it and I honestly still think that. It still ended up being relatively popular on PTS since initially it came with 20% attack speed meaning especially attack speed based characters, attack speed focused characters would work very well with it and clear the jungle very quickly and be ready to fight very quickly as well. That is still the case even with 15% attack speed of course. I'm somewhat torn on the performance of this item. On one hand, if you didn't have it and you had to fight someone with it, then that could hurt in early stages, that could hurt a lot since it comes with so many benefits. On the other hand, this item comes with very limited sustain. It has some HP 5, but you'll still usually end up either getting pots or having to play a character that just has a lot of self-sustain, like for example Arachne. In a vacuum, for those characters, it can work quite well. At the same time, I would say the passive is one of the most useless features I've ever seen in Smite, and I still don't understand why this passive is on this item at all. Now don't get me wrong, free wards are great. But the problem is that the ward gets placed wherever you kill the big minion, so you don't really have all too much control over that, since you can't get them out of the radius of the camp. In addition to that, the ward only lasts 30 seconds and will be placed in an area that you just cleared. 
that is usually not where you want to rotate back to, even if you spot an enemy there. Sure, there are outliers, but most of the time you want to be somewhere else and getting more farm in that time. And while I'm sure that there are some niche cases where you can kill the enemy harpies and then have the ward on the edge of that camp and wait until an enemy comes, I think those are so rare that 90% of the time this passive will simply not be utilized. It'll just be random wards on your side of the map where no one's actually going because the camp's already cleared. The other limitation of this item is that especially the tier 1 is relatively focused on attack speed, so it doesn't work as well on ability-based characters, even though it's not bad on them either. I would put this in a solid A, knowing that it's quite good on some characters but just not as good on others. On certain characters I would place it higher than that. And last but not least, there is Mannequin Scepter. The most expensive one with a price tag of 750 gold and with some unusual stats. This comes with 10 extra basic attack damage, 15 physical protection and 3 damage reduction. If you hit an enemy with a basic attack, they take 16 physical damage as a burn damage over 2 seconds and their attack speed is slowed by 7%. Against camps, this damage is tripled, so 48 physical damage as a burn over 2 seconds, and this damage can stack up to 4 times, and the damage applied, no matter how many stacks you have, will be applied across 4 ticks. In return, Mannequin Scepter does not have any built-in sustain, so if you build this in certain power items at the start of the game, you may hardly be able to fit any pots in. Initially, Mannequin Scepter was actually picked up a lot by solos and ADCs as well, due to its high tick damage, and that's why Hyrus nerfed that a little bit in the first phase. I still saw it afterwards, and I still saw it being relatively successful, and I think that, along with the passive, the damage reduction is a major factor in this. It just works incredibly well against lane minions too, allowing for more early aggression. Now I think Mannequin Scepter is an interesting item and it's definitely the hardest one to weigh here and the least explored because it's such a different playstyle from what we are used to. What somewhat limits this item is that it's even more restricted to basic attack junglers than Eye of the Jungle, with it not even offering any power at all, just basic attack damage and then the passive along with it. When I tried this on Kali, who doesn't have the highest self-sustain, I ended up chugging through quite a few pots in the early game in order to make it work. Obviously this works a little better with certain other characters. What I personally found was that the early aggression potential with Mannequin Scepter felt a lot higher than with Eye of the Jungle due to the additional burn damage. It just felt very punishing for the enemy to even get close to you and try to box you at all or not disengage immediately in any form since they would be hit by so much extra ticking damage. In addition to that, the mix of protection, damage reduction and an attack speed slow on the enemy makes it very intimidating for the enemy jungler to try and box you at all. They usually just have to back off until later into the game. However, even more so than Eye of the Jungle, the upgrades are limited in who can use them effectively a lot. And as such, I would say this is around A+, due to the fact that it has such high aggression, but at the same time it's very restrictive in who can use it and who can keep it into late game as well. Well, you can technically never go wrong with Bambas on any god because they can all use it, that is most certainly not the case for Mannequin. And with that, let's look back at Bambas and look at the upgrades. The first one here is Bambas Spear. Almost did a little bit of poetry there. So that comes with a price tag of 2100 gold, same as Bambas Hammer. The upgrades are always 1500 gold, so you basically just slap that on the base price. Bamba's Spear comes with 60 physical power or 90 magical power, depending on what role you're playing. Along with that, it comes with 200 health and 200 mana. That's all in terms of stats, but it also has additional effects against jungle camps. On basic attacks, you deal 50 true damage, and with abilities, you deal plus 50% damage. And this also applies to structures or jungle bosses. Obviously, you can't hit structures with abilities, but you get the idea. The health restore is still 10%, but you also get an additional 10% mana restore as well now, and you get 10 gold for killing any jungle targets. What is important about this is that it applies to objectives and structures as well. So if you kill the fire giant, you get healed for 10% of its maximum health, and same with towers. So this could be very interesting in an objective, secure structure push, where you suddenly get a massive heal and mana restore along with that. Now while this item sounds incredibly interesting, there's one big problem. The item didn't work properly on PTS, so there was actually no way to test all of this. I imagine it has quite interesting potential for split pushing specifically, 
and also for objective secures due to the higher ability damage and everything. But again, we couldn't test any of that. I don't really want to give the item a rating without being able uh, to figure out what it can actually do in game. I would say that the base stats are a nice mix. It has quite a lot of power and a decent amount of health along with that. But the passive doesn't shine over many of the others that we see on other items here later. If I had to make a prediction, it would probably be around B tier somewhere, but really there isn't much to go off here because it didn't work at all, so I can't really say how good it's going to be. The next item is one that I've tested extensively, and that is Bamba's Hammer. Bamba's Hammer comes with the same price tag, 2100 gold. It comes with 300 health, 200 mana, 10% cooldown reduction, and 10% penetration. Very weird mix of stats. If you hit an enemy with an ability, and then hit them with a basic attack afterwards. This deals 80 true damage to them, in addition to the normal damage. It heals you for 5% of your maximum health, and it reduces the cooldown of your abilities currently on cooldown by one second. And no, it does not work on King Arthur. I think this item is incredibly interesting due to the many unique interactions that it has, but outside of that it's also a strong item in itself. I would say that while these stats may not be super inviting since it doesn't come with any power, it probably still is the best option for most ability-based junglers. This may potentially mean that we won't see many ability-based junglers because other junglers will just dominate, but that's yet to be determined. This item works incredibly well in bruiser builds where you have a little bit more survivability, can make use of this effect more often. But it's also far from bad in more damage focused builds, since then it's just your survivability item in the build. It synergizes very well with a lot of assassin items, think for example Crusher, Heartseeker or Hydra's Lament, that all benefit from having either reduced cooldowns or using more basic attacks in between. And even with mages, you can make it work quite well in different ways. If we leave out the characters that it currently breaks completely, like Emoja, then I would say the item is a solid S tier. The next item is the first upgrade for Eye of the Jungle, Seer of the Jungle. Cost here is 2150 gold, it comes with 60 physical power or 90 magical power, as well as 25 physical protection and 20% attack speed. In addition to that, it deals 30% extra damage to jungle camps and jungle bosses, but not to structures different from Bamba Spear. The item also gives you vision of wards for 10 seconds after defeating a large jungle monster or boss. Now before I rate this, I want to show you something side by side here. Look at Protector of the Jungle, the other upgrade option. Here you have 65 physical power or 100 magical power, you have 35 physical protection and you have 35% attack speed. So excluding the passives, Protector of the Jungle has significantly better stats all around. And that gets amplified further if you also factor in that Protector of the Jungle has 12% extra power and protections for you while in the jungle. And that makes them almost directly comparable. And that brings us to the question, is it worth to have slightly more jungle damage that's almost offset by the lower stats anyways, and be able to see wards on the map sometimes in return for such a massive stat loss? And I would argue that it's not. I would argue that it's better to just get a sentry ward and put that in your inventory and work with that. Now on the competitive level of play, there may be a benefit here to having a character that can very easily clear out a lot of wards. Maybe it'll be used there, but outside of competitive, I don't really see a niche for this item. It almost feels like this is what you would buy if you're just tired of yelling at your team for not getting sentries. I would say Seer of the Jungle is B tier at best, if even, whereas Protector of the Jungle with its very strong stats is at least a plus. It is one of the few items that can also be used decently by ability-based characters and the buff is very nice. The problem really is that it only works in jungle, so if you get into a late game siege for example and your team is getting attacked or you're trying to push down a phoenix, it doesn't really do that much for you. But then again, neither does Sea of the Jungle. And that brings us to the last upgrade here from Mannequin Scepter, first one being Mannequin Maze. Mannequin Mace costs 2250 gold and comes with 50 extra basic attack damage. It also comes with 30 extra physical protections as well as 100 health and 8 damage reduction. The passive is that you deal 60 physical damage as a burn over 2 seconds. This also applies a 10% attack speed slow to the enemy. 
Against jungle camps, this damage is quadrupled to 240 physical burn damage. This also comes with a 4 stack maximum. And again, before we rate this, we look at the counterpart. That is Mannequin Hidden Blade, which costs 2250 gold as well, but comes with 75 basic attack damage, also 30 physical protection, but only 5 damage reduction. The passive here is that it deals 15% of the target's current health as physical damage if you haven't taken or dealt damage for 5 seconds. It also applies a 20% slow to the target for 5 seconds. And this is very interesting overall, right? If you compare these two items, stat-wise, Mannequin Hidden Blade is the one who comes with a fair bit more basic attack damage, while Mannequin Mace is the one that wants you to use basic attacks more. So it's a little bit confusing, and I wanted to break that down a little bit so you get a better idea of how these items compare. So the first thing that's worth pointing out is that both of these items come with physical damage, so we don't have to factor in any mitigation, it's the same for either. Ignoring those, Mannequin Mace would deal 240 tick damage after 4 basic attacks against a target, whereas Mannequin Hidden Blade would immediately deal 300 damage against a target with 2000 HP or 450 damage against a target with 3000 HP. Now, if we factor in the basic attack damage as well, the numbers look a little bit different, because we have to keep in mind that with every basic attack we do, uh, Mannequin Hidden Blade will get 25 extra basic attack damage through the item stats itself. So we're just going to calculate the difference here, meaning that with Mannequin Mace, after 4 basic attacks we still have the 240 tick damage, whereas if we were to hit a 2000 health target with Mannequin Hidden Blade 4 times, then we'd get the initial proc and the extra damage from the basic attacks, resulting in 400 total damage. Based on that alone, it may sound like Mannequin Hidden Blade might also be the better option for basic attacking characters. But you have to keep in mind that this is just the ideal scenario with full HP, since Mannequin Hidden Blade scales off of the target's current health, not maximum health. And in that context, it's worth noting that assassins typically don't go after the target which is full HP. Sure, sometimes they do, but generally you want to pick off targets that are already a little bit lower, which would lower the benefit of Mannequin Hidden Blade. Then again, Mannequin Hidden Blade is instant, which may be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on if the enemy, for example, pulls an Aegis. At the same time, we have more damage reduction in the game now, which would affect Mannequin Mace more if you're only getting a few ticks on them. The more basic attacks you get on them, the less of an issue this is because they kind of get factored in together, so only one of them gets reduced. Beyond that, we'd also have to talk about the jungle objective damage, where I would say Mannequin Mace is definitely coming out on top, simply because a lot of the damage comes later, whereas everything with Mannequin Hidden Blade is front-loaded, and front-loaded damage is not going to help you secure an objective. And last but not least, it's important that Mannequin Mace has significantly better tanky stats. I'm not quite sure why, because the item just doesn't feel like a tank item, but I guess it's so that you're actually able to stick to enemies and apply the damage to them. But then Mannequin Hidden Blade is the one that got the slow, whereas Mannequin Mace got the attack speed slow. So in many ways, the mixed stats on these items don't really make sense to me personally. I feel like Mannequin Hidden Blade should actually have less damage for basic attacks, but rather have power instead, and be a secondary ability-based choice, instead of having both kind of focused around basic attacks. When I tried it, the trade-off of not getting any power or pen in order to deal a little bit more damage did not really feel worth it, for example, on Danzaburo jungle. So I think Mannequin Hidden Blade is the weaker one of the two overall. It just felt a little bit underwhelming. I would put it maybe into A tier, but would also not argue against anyone wanting to put it lower. Mannequin Maze, on the other hand, I think is more of a threat in most situations and can be more reliably used and those characters that make good use of it can use it very well, so I would say it's more of an A plus item, though once again it's a bit restricted by who can use it. Generally speaking, I felt like a lot of the current starters focus too heavily on basic attacks and not enough on abilities, or the ones that focus on abilities come with significant downsides for ability users. Therefore, I also wanted to try some other options. One option that I tried was Death Toll. This was in its pre-nerf state, but I would say it's probably still possible afterwards, which is very nice in terms of sustain. It actually keeps up with Bumbas in that regard, but your clear is significantly slower, and I think that is a bit of an issue. Bluestone Pendant, on the other hand, is an item that could potentially become interesting for some junglers. 
While it doesn't come with as much single target damage as Mannequin Scepter, it does keep up decently well when it comes to clearing. So far I've tried it on King Arthur and I would imagine it's similar on Kukulin. On other guards it might be a lot harder. You just have to have a guard that can consistently proc this thing over and over in order to keep up in jungle clear. But on the other hand it has power HP5 and MP5 which helps you in the jungle and it also has an upgrade that ability based characters can probably use quite well. There is also Leather Cowl which could be interesting due to the extra lifesteal as well as movement speed that it offers but I can't say that as I haven't tested it. Technically some mage starters might work as well but I haven't tried any of them because they didn't seem appealing to me. What I noticed regarding the jungle upgrades and why I tried other options as well is that it seems like a lot of upgrades are focused on you doing things in the jungle in late game. The problem is that in late game you aren't necessarily in the jungle. You might be in the lanes, you might be along the structure areas. So you have to sometimes just get out of the jungle and that's when a lot of the items fall a little bit short and maybe don't offer you the same boxing capabilities for example. That is why I'm under the impression that Hyrus might not necessarily want you to keep your upgrade starter until the end of the game as a jungler. In some cases, yes, with some of these it's absolutely fine, but with others, especially Bumba's Spear, I have the feeling they kind of want you to swap it out in the very late game if it comes to that. Which I guess is fine as well, because you get extra gold on the way there. I think the new starter items are most certainly very interesting, I just think that some of them need a little bit polishing, and we need a little bit more focus on ability-based junglers in here. Again, more of these videos for other roles are coming soon, so if you're new to the channel, feel free to sub button and maybe the bell so you get notified of that if you haven't yet. Other than that, I hope to see you for the next one later or tomorrow. I might throw in another PTS gameplay. Thank you guys very much for watching. Duke Sloth, out.